So you might think the S23 Ultra is just like the S22 Ultra, but is it actually? We are same, same. Same, same, but different. But still same. The S22 Ultra hit all the marks when it first came out. It really shined in four major areas. The camera, the battery life, the display, and the added S Pen. For the camera, it kept the 108 megapixel sensor on the main camera, as well as the 10X telephoto lens that gives you that 100 times space zoom. With everything combined, this became one of the best phones to snap a photo with. It's quick and snappy, it takes a sharp photo, it's got great colors. And if you wanna see a comparison, check out this video right here. The S22 Ultra had some great battery life, lasting most users the entire day. Z Tech Care did do a battery life test though, it did last worse than some of the best phones out there, but it was lasting nine hours on that battery test where it's continuous use, and it's pretty good. So in a large part, this is due to the new efficient Snapdragon 1 that came out with the S22 Ultra. Although it may also be part of its downfalls, and we'll get into that in a little bit when we talk about the S23 Ultra. As far as display goes, Samsung's always winning. Ooh, voice crack, holy sh**. <laughs> Sheesh. As far as display goes, Samsung is always winning in this category and they didn't miss with the S22 Ultra. They had a 1300 nits display, 6.8 inches, LTPO up to 120 hertz. It's really beautiful, really bright and vibrant, and it was one of the best screens to look at on a phone. So the S22 Ultra adopted the S Pen from the Note series and it's just as good as it was. It's got a great button that auto erases with one swipe and it's got a super slow response time. There is some debate as to whether it's really useful or more of a gimmick, but you can't deny that it works well. Real quick, we're doing a new thing each video called random beef bit. So here we go with beef bit number one. Look, I'm not trying to say anything. I'm not trying to start anything, but garden salsa sun chips. Let us know in the comments. So what did Samsung do when they made this banger of a phone? Control C, Control V, and then like added stuff to make it even better. To Cal's point, these changes are really small, but they do make a really big difference if you pay attention and you know what to look for. So starting with the cameras, Samsung decided to flex on the entire industry and jump straight to a 200 megapixel sensor. Now that number in and of itself does not mean that these photos are far and away better than last year's or the year before's, but they do help gather more light, add more sharpness, and overall just give you a better photo. If you take a look at these photos here, you might not be able to tell which is which right off the bat, but if you take a closer look you can kind of see some sharpness details that are improved and just overall light balance is better you can also shoot in the 200 megapixel mode which gives you full resolution and looks really good and if you are worried about file size you can also shoot in a 50 megapixel mode to get extra sharpness without sacrificing space in the end computational photography reigns supreme in smartphone photography we see this in pixel phones where they have a 12 megapixel sensor that's four years old taking better photos than a 50 megapixel sensor in an s20 plus but we have to give samsung credit for pushing the limits of technology the two 200 megapixel sensor definitely helps their photos and will push the market forward in every way. Samsung decided to take the opposite approach when it comes to their selfie camera. Last year they had a 40 megapixel selfie cam and this year they only have a 12 megapixel selfie cam. Now, same principle apply, it's not all about the megapixels. This year they're using a little bit better computational photography to help out their photos and it actually looks a little bit better. If you've watched our camera comparison video, you know that the S22 Ultra takes the best selfie pictures. So the fact that they were able to improve on that is saying something. Last but not least, the S23 Ultra still takes one of the best videos on the market, but they did add 30 frames per second for the 8K video. In the past, 8K on Samsung phones has been all right. It's just kind of a gimmick. It's there if you want to use it. But this year with 30 frames per second and a better chip, this actually is very usable. The 8K is very clean, crispy, and smooth, and it actually looks really good. One of my favorite things about this phone is the feel in the hand. And sorry, Kurt, I don't care. I'm gonna say it, the feel in the hand, the feel in the hand, the feel in the hand. <laughs> but seriously, one of my favorite things about this phone is the feel in the hand. They did this slight tweak where they made the edges of the S23 Ultra just a little bit more square. And for some reason, it just feels better. I don't know how else to say it. The square outside edges of the phone really make it feel more secure in the hand. It's easier to pick up. Feels like you're holding a solid phone that's well-designed and really just makes you wanna keep holding it. So the feel in the hand is great and I do love it. 
and I would trade my phone for it. And the S22 Ultra really kind of feels like it's all glass. It feels like it's constantly gonna break or slip. Some other small changes, there's some really cool colors that I really liked. And additionally, the camera lenses are just slightly bigger in diameter, but nothing worth mentioning really. One unexpected improvement with the S23 Ultra is battery life. As we said before, the S22 Ultra had insane battery life at about nine hours of continuous use. Going back to ZTech Care's battery test, he got over an hour of extra battery life on the S23 Ultra. So how can this be if the battery capacity stayed the same? This is because of the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. This year, Samsung's running a custom version of this chip. They're calling it the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 4 Galaxy, which pretty much means nothing so don't take any value in that all it really means is that samsung is slightly underclocking the chip and it's optimizing for certain apps and processes but because it's underclocking the chip it runs cooler and uses less battery so we think this is where you're gaining that extra hour of battery life so there's one last final difference between these phones that we think is worth mentioning the brightness has gone from 1300 nits to 1750 and it might seem like nothing but trust me it makes this screen pop off the phone. It's great. We couldn't stop staring at it. Cow almost lost an eye. At this point, you're like at least four minutes into this video. You're probably super bored wondering why am I watching this video? I should click away, but don't because we're going to talk about the things that stay the same. And that's important because it is really similar. First, the battery is the same size, like Cal mentioned earlier at 5,000 milliamp hours. But like he also said, you're getting more out of it. Second, the telephoto camera and lens is still banging and probably the best in the market. You're getting a great 3X photo, great 10x photo and although there's some suspicions about the moon photos the 100 times camera is pretty impressive also the screen resolution is the same at 1440 and the refresh rate is the same at 120 hertz which is great because we loved it in the old phone so cow get on my face <laughs> and the s pen that everyone knows and loves is also the same which again is great but i'll end with this if you have an s22 ultra i might not tell you to go jump off your couch and trade it in right now but if you have a 21 or a 20, would I tell you to spend the extra money and get the S23 Ultra? I think I would. It's worth it. The phone was great. Me and Cal loved our experience with it. And yeah, I mean, that's it. That's the video. Cool. Thanks, Austin, for ruining our watch time. Anyway, if you like this video, just, I guess, hit the thumbs up and then subscribe for the vibe if you want. But always remember, you can't be beefy without this cake, boy. <laughs>